Hey guys, Pete with Crunch Time Coaching. Today we've got an awesome lesson on the serve. It's covering pronation and we're going to reveal the number one mistake you're making when it comes to focusing on pronation. So if you're ready, let's get started. Okay guys, so serve pronation, let's talk about it. Easily one of the most asked questions in tennis is serve pronation. What is serve pronation? How do you pronate on the serve? Are you pronated on your slice serve? Are you pronated on your kick serve? Do you pronate on flat serves? And let me tell you something guys, here's the thing about serve pronation. You pronate on all serves and the number one mistake you're making is that you're thinking about it way too much. Let me explain. Alright guys, so before I really show you what serve pronation is and, and show you how you can do it easily today. Um, I'm going to just explain what it is. If you were to go do a Google search on pronation when it comes to the hand and the forearm and you're going to see a picture of a hand like this to where it's downward or backward, okay? So either you can think of your palm being downward or your hand backward. If the hand is in a neutral position, it's like this. And if your hand is in supination, it's like this, okay? So again, pronation, neutral, supination. So when you're pronating on the serve, basically to get that hand going in that downward or backward position, you're basically just going like this. That, that is what pronation is. And the reason why I say people think about it too much is even if you're in a beginner type grip, which most people start playing tennis like this, even if you're in this grip, without having to think too hard, you are pronating. So as I'm hitting these serves, most people as they're going to hit their serves, even in a beginner grip, you're pronating there as you're going to put that ball in play. So you could look at pronation as almost like a remedial type skill. The real skill and the difference between most recreational players I see and the professional players is that they are able to keep their hand in a neutral position for much longer than most recreational players. See, so most pros, when they get ready to hit, they get set, and as they're coming up, that racket is staying on edge until the very last second, which would be considered in a neutral position. And then as they're getting ready to hit, then they start to pronate right there at the very last second. Now, where most recreational players serve fall apart, even if they're in the correct continental grip, what happens is they come back, they put their hand into an extended position back here, which I like to call the pizza move. And this is pretty much going to enable you to pronate on the serve, but not the way you want to in an, in an advanced sense, which most people are looking to do. So this is where I see a lot of players serve fall apart. You come here, you go back into extension, you go back into extension, but as you hit, you're still going into pronation. You're going back into extension and then into pronation as you're coming out to hit. So as you can see, the key again becomes how do we stay in a neutral position just like the pros. So what I have for you today is pretty cool. I like to 3x the learning curve. So you can learn three times faster than the average person. So I've got some 3x pronator drills I'm going to give you right now. Also, if you stick around to the end, and if you're good, if you stick around to the very, very end, I'm going to give you a 3x bonus on the power surf. So be looking out for that, and let's get to our first exercise. Okay, so this first one is kind of unique. I call it the Happy Days Pronator Party Trick. I was watching Happy Days one day, and I remember this episode to where I think it was one of Fonzie's or Chachi's buddies, family member, something like that. He was going for the Guinness Book of World Records of putting quarters on his elbow, and then he'd go up and he'd catch the quarter. All right, okay, now Angie, do whatever you do with these 12 coins, right? You're going for the record now. You're going for the record. Right, just hey, 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 hey. 
hour. So what we're going to do is a little different. You can do this at home, you can do it at a party, or you can do it as a warm-up on the court. And it's kind of, I would dare say, ingenious that I just came up with this because it does make you go from a neutral position into pronation. Okay, that's all. That's all it is, guys. This is all pronation is right there. That's all it is. A lot easier than you think. So what you're going to do is you're going to put that quarter right there and then you're going to catch it. And look, now I'm in pronation, okay? And I've got the quarter, okay? So kind of cool. Let's do that again. Let's see if we can do that again. Really works on your hand speed too. If you go too slow, so it kind of helps your acceleration too. If you, if you go too slow, most likely the quarter is going to get away from you. You see that? So you got to go quick, catch that quarter, try that, impress your friends, and learn how to pronate on your serve. It's a win-win. Okay, so let's get into 3x power exercise number two. Now, learning how to go from a neutral to a pronated position is one of the toughest moves in tennis. It eludes most players. And I find the reason why it's so hard for so many is that you are here trying to get the entire motion all coordinated at once. And you want the serve to eventually feel like it's this one flowing piece. But in the beginning, there's lots of moving parts. So I like to reverse engineer the process. So what we're going to do is actually we're going to put down the racket. This is another uh, mistake I see people make. You can really learn a lot about the, the movements by putting the racket down and understanding that what your arm is doing and what your hand is doing, you know, that's basically manipulating the racket. So you really want to understand and feel what, what the hand is doing here because it needs to stay in a neutral position and then get into a pronated position. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to throw some tennis balls here. And, and we're going to start with our chest facing out that way towards the court. And we're going to, I like to call this the cobra move, we're going to put the, the ball in our fingers like this. See that? Like a baseball pitcher. And baseball pitchers also work on this is going from, from a neutral position into a pronation. They work on this as well. This is, where, this is where you really get that whip, that snap, that pop on the serve. So we're going to come here by our ear. We're going to leverage back. See that? We come back here and then up. And what you're going to focus on is facing your thumbnail out and away from you. Face your thumbnail out and away by the time you're done. And you're going to see that a lot of pitchers do this and also football uh, quarterbacks. So we're here, coming down and back, and then away. Okay, see that finish right there. Again, we're here, we're making sure that the ball is facing into us, and then we're going to bring our hand away from us. And that is basically it, guys. That's pronation right here. And then back. The more you come back, the more you get comfortable coming back like this in this motion, you're going to find that you're getting more whip and pop on it. And again, making sure that thumbnail is facing away. Okay, so let's get into our next 3x pronator exercise here. And what we're going to do is now we're going to put the racket in our hand. And we're still working on reverse engineering the process to where we're not trying to do this entire motion. We're going to make this nice and easy. But if we can do this, we're doing something very advanced that very few of your peers are ever able to do. So you want to make sure you pay attention and go out and do it just like this. First of all, make sure you're in that continental grip. I like the um, the top tennis train, how they call it, the, tr the chopper grip. And I like that too. So we'll call it the chopper grip, like you're going to chop something. That's an advanced grip. And you can hold the, the racket low, which will give you more racket at speed if you do this, but I actually think it's better to grab it somewhere, even up by the throat is fine. I'm going to grab near the top of the grip to make this easier on myself. Okay, so now I've got to do is go from here, I'm going to throw the ball up. Notice again, my chest is facing towards the court. We're making this super easy. We're not trying to hit the ball hard or anything like that. And we start in our neutral position. The string should be facing into to you as you, I just tap my head there and now I'm going to throw the ball up and put the thumbnail away. Again, here, go to hit, push the thumbnail out and away.
One more. Notice how I'm also stopping. I'm basically hitting, stopping, and, and you just really want to see that work for you where you're coming here, starting to make some solid contact, and push away. That was a nice one. You want to get a little sampersy with it, you can put that elbow up high like that when you finish. Now once you start to feel good with that, you can start to add in a follow through. So what you can do is you can come here in your neutral position, you lay back more. The more you get comfortable with also laying back, now you're going to get more leverage and snap up there. Hit, and then you're going to relax around into what I call the ice cream scoop finish. Pretend this is an ice cream uh, cone here and you can lick the racket, okay? That's why I like to call it the ice cream scoop finish, that you're kind of scooping some ice cream out there at your favorite ice cream shop. And we're here, I'm gonna come down more, I'm gonna come up here, and then in the beginning I, I suggest you can even just stop and then work it. So that's what I'm gonna do on the first one. I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna come down more, stop, and then work it. Right? One more. Then you can make it flow. That now I'll go a little more to where it's kind of a little more continuous here. Stop and go into the ice cream scoop finish. And the last one, I'm just gonna let the whole thing work itself out in a nice smooth motion. Okay, now next progression, what you can do is now start to stand sideways, like you see most of the pros stand, pretty much every single pro, and you still start in that neutral position, and now you're gonna throw that ball up and come around. You're gonna throw that ball up, hit it, push out, and relax around the ice cream scoop finish. Come here, pronate out, and around. Let me do that again. Good here, set, pronate out, and come around. Just relaxing here. Just getting set, getting comfortable in that neutral position. And hitting, last one, and around and hit. So here is what I need you to do next. I need you to go out to the court and then comment below the video and let me know if you are successful. Because if you are successful, which I think you will be after watching the, this video and following the move step by step, you're now in the inner circle. You're, you're doing something that most recreational players, it eludes them their entire life. So you're gonna be in the select, a select few people who can actually go out there and do this. You wanna know what else? eludes most people is being able to have a lot of power in the serve. So they're looking for that, that 100 mile an hour inner circle. And I have a bonus train called the 3X Power Serve. And there was a lady, Emily, who's 3-5 player. I'm gonna put, put her quote right up here on the screen. 3-5 player. So she never really could, could get any kind of power in the serve. And she went out and did one of these exercises. You're about to get 100% free and was able to hit 100 miles an hour. She had one of those I think one of those things on the racket that measured the, the pace and she was going from 70 miles an hour and got one all the way up to 100 miles an hour. So watch this preview, sign up and I'll see you inside the bonus train. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Hey guys, it's Pete and Matt and welcome back to video number two in our 3X Power Serve training. That's right, where we systematically identify your power leaks and replace them with power sources, get you that big serve that you always dreamed of. That's right, in video one, we showed you a power leak that not a lot of people pay attention to in their lower body, and we show you how it's actually affecting your upper body. 12 mile per hour difference when Pete did the two different versions of this. That's right, and today what we're gonna do is we're going to take a look at the upper body. Lots of people want more racket head speed, Matt, mm -hmm. and I identified the number one power leak that they're doing in the upper body, right? and we're gonna replace it with the secret power source. That's right, the secret source. 30 of you sent videos right. that Pete analyzed. He's going through it now. That's right. Flipping them through. Look at that, there it is. 28 of these serves Another didn't one. have it. They didn't have the secret Another source. Another one. Only two, and those two Another were one. big serves. Another one. Yeah. Another one. Another one. Whoa, what's that? Matt, that's... That's, uh, that's that's you. That's someone who looks like me. That's no, weird. that's you. That's strange. 
looks a lot like me. <laughs> You're doing the exact power leak that I point out to these right. people. You got me. I uh, <laughs> I don't have the secret source down perfect. Do you want to know who has the secret source down though? Who? Oh my gosh. Fedheads? Roger Fetter. Of course. All right, pull it up. <laughs>